Enable notifications by ringing the bell. So life, uh, life can suck sometimes. Uh, when some of your uh, favorite people are uh, unfortunately killed on stage, or whether they pass away from un from unfortunate circumstances, um, there's nothing you can really do about it, which is which sucks. But at the same time, it's the fact that they were here and the fact that they made music and they made an impact on your life. It's just like when Chester Bennington uh, passed away last year. There was a huge outpouring of love and support for Lincoln Park and also Chester's family and his six kids. Man, I had six kids, which was unbelievable. And um, here recently there's been a, an outpouring of support for one uh, Vincent Abbott, a.k.a. Vinnie Paul. And um, Vinnie Paul, for those of you who don't know out there, was the drummer for one of my favorite uh, metal groups of all time, Pantera. Now, previously we did do a Pantera video for uh, for Domination, which which was which was good. But seeing as how I have a fellow metalhead here with me, uh, Michael, would you consider yourself a metalhead to some degree? No, no. Okay, that's fair. I'm enough. still not really sure what metal is. I mean, I know what metal is, like the raw material, but but the music you're still a bit foggy on, right? Okay, that's I fair could enough. teach you so much. You probably could. <laughs> like young I could teach you so much. You probably could. No, I can show you things something. I think you would like, even though you're not into metal, and I, I can show like, you the side of it that you'll be like, no, not for me. I, like but I, I can teach like you many things. Like they would all this. snap spontaneously. It's like this. It's like Black Sabbath. This is what many call the progenitor. Led Zeppelin. Some call the imitators. Some call the truth. I say Wait, a oh, different path. So is Led Zeppelin? Is that metal? Some people say metal. Oh. Some people That's say hard debate. rock. That's a debate. Oh, okay. See, I say Led Zeppelin is classic rock. Okay. I'd say I'd say they're hard rock. Slash, well, some people actually some in, metal bands nowadays name them as some of their influences. Like case in yeah. point. Yeah. Well, it's fine to have influence from a band that's not metal as well. Well, because metal is influenced by all genres of music. It's influenced by classical. It's influenced by blues. Oh yeah. It's influenced by psychedelic. Um, yeah, like I mean, modern metal has uh, a lot of EDM influences and stuff like that a lot yeah. of the times well, as well. Well, yeah, I mean, every well, all forms of music are absorptions of one another in yeah. some way or form. So metal's like... the the form of music that I have heard incorporate the most other forms of music out of anything I've ever listened to. So when you say EDM, you're not talking about electro. Electrical diode machining. No, I'm talking about electronic dance music. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like it's like pre-programmed beats, sequencing, okay. synthesizers, yeah. and all that. So it's essentially a, uh, a an umbrella term for just um, all all techno. Basically, the term used to be techno, but I haven't heard people say techno in a long time. Right. They started saying uh, EDM for electronic dance, like robot music. It's kind a, of, basically kind anything of. that's made on a computer. Okay. Essentially, Almost, yeah, pretty much. That's that's a very a or very just all operation. synths, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. So for me, when I heard that uh, when I heard that Vinnie Paul passed away, um, I immediately said, "Okay, so next recording session, we need to do sort of a tribute where we watch." One of uh, one of Pantera one of Pantera's songs that honestly a lot of people have said first to watch and the the connector for this is that Domination the that one we watched was live it was them live in Russia right after the Iron Curtain fell they went over there and played in front of I believe it was a crowd of around 1.6 million people in in a in a gigantic airfield in Russia like the like the Russian police were there to try and control the crowds and everything. Like, I forget how many Russian cops showed up. They were, like, all in front of the stage, like, hitting everybody with batons, like, getting, oh. trying to get them to stay So when you were going to say the police were, like, into it as well. Oh, I'm just like, oh, this is awesome. Get into it. Actually, yeah. there was reports that during some of the metal performances, while there were mosh pits going on out in the crowds, like, the barrier between the cops, uh, between the, uh, the barrier between the, the audience and the stage... There were cops in there that were moshing as well, like yeah. actually getting into the music and feeling it and everything. I mean, and fighting Russian 
baton wielding cops does sound pretty metal. Oh, it is. Yeah, that, that is metal. That's M A F right there. Um, Got my arm broken by a cop with a baton at the Pantera show. Who's metal as fuck? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So, uh, Primal Concrete Sledge was another song that Pantera played, and this is actually one uh, Nick says that he has not heard, and. His band, uh, which if you want to check them out, uh, there's a link to uh, Nick's channel down below. And, I hope uh, my guitarist doesn't watch this video and kick me out of the band for not hearing this song before. <laughs> well, hey, hey. They, there's some Pantera songs I'd never heard before until like last year. Like one, Immortally Insane, which was from like the Heavy Metal 2000 soundtrack. And like I heard it and I was just like, wow, how come I've never heard this before? Because... It was like one... It, to me, it's like one of their, like one of their best songs. Yeah. Uh, and also... Uh, I didn't know this, but uh, uh, one of my favorite MMA fighters, uh, Matt Brown, who's named the Immortal, because he survived several near-death experiences, and he's flatlined three times in his life and come back every time. Wow! So they call him the Immortal, and uh, he's like one of the toughest SOB. He was actually at uh, the uh, the uh, Amorosa uh, the night Dime was killed. He was there. Oh wow! In uh, he was there in Ohio, and. He was, uh, or the Alrosa Villa, that's what it's called. Not the Amorosa, the Alrosa, sorry. Um, and, uh, he was there in the crowd that night, and he actually gave, like, a first-hand recollection of what happened. Like, he heard the gunshots ring out, and he thought maybe he could do something, and a security guard actually tackled him to keep him from charging the stage, and, uh, like, and he was, like, took cover behind a pillar until the cops got there, and he said after he, after he, after it was all over, he went over... And saw Dimebag Daryl and the damage that had been done. You know, you, nobody survived six gunshots to the back of the head. Mm. Nobody. I mean, I mean, Dime's a, Dime was a tough sob, but no, I mean, it, it and it was a hell of a thing to happen too because they just started playing. They were right in the middle, of like their first or second song, I believe, and then Nathan Gale jumped up on stage. Which, by the way, fuck. By the way, Nathan Gale, screw you, dude. Yeah. You cheated us out of years and years of great music with Damage Plan. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, uh, Pantera. Uh, this uh, was their live show back in 1991 on the Monsters of Rock tour with Metallica, ACDC, and I think Motley Crue as well. Like, several big bands were on this tour. They say it was, like, the best year for the Monsters of Rock tour. And uh, Pantera was one of the opening acts, and a lot of people said Pantera outshone them. And uh, this is Primal Concrete Sledge, so here we go. I think it's appropriate for me to. Oh yeah, let your hair go. Down. Metal hair let for it this. Whip. Let it whip, dude. Let it whip. If I had the hair, I'd I'd have it down with you. Hopefully, so my here. microphone doesn't go flying across the room if it during does, this video. It's fine. You get <laughs> All right, so here we go. Three, two, one. God, I love Phil's energy. I love the faces he makes. Oh yeah. Slow. <laughs> Go. I think this is an appropriate choice to um, to uh, see off Vinny. Yeah, Cause this drum part, man. Like, oh yeah, he. That's sick. Vinny is on point in this. Song, yeah, dude. I mean, he. I mean, he was on point in everything he played, dude. He was just a killer on the drums, dude. One of the best in the world. Him rocking a cowboy shirt too. <laughs> I 
Look at Dime just dragging his hair to the floor. I love yeah. it. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Pantera inspired like so many modern yes. metal stage moves. Yeah. Like there's so oh, many things off. that people do that you saw Pantera doing like back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all of them just wanting to mosh, but the cops are telling them no. Nah. Actually, the cops wouldn't let people mosh because they thought it was just them fighting, but no, it's just oh, the cops so, didn't understand what moshing was. Yeah, it's so disappointing. Time for Primal Concrete Sledge! That would have been sick to be at that show, but at the same time, it would have made me mad to like be like, "Why won't the cops let us mosh?" You know? Yeah. I wouldn't have understood what their problem was during the show, and then like afterwards, I would have thought about it and been like, "Okay, like they just didn't understand," you know? Yeah, they didn't, they didn't. At understand. the same time, like to be seeing Pantera and to not be allowed to mosh, no, I know. Like, man. God dang it, man! The fact that we're never going to see Pantera again. I mean, I yeah. was pissed about that in like 2004 when Dime died. I was just like. We're never gonna see Pantera now. I mean, you know, they'll have like a like a guitarist come in and like it. Like if anything, probably Zach Wild, I'd say, because him and Dime were like really, really good friends. Yeah. And uh, if anything, maybe Zach Wild could like take his place on tour. But then again, Zach Wild's doing his own thing, and you know, I I wouldn't want to like take away from what he's doing. Yeah, but, it's just always disappointing to like if you if you haven't seen a band before. And then this happens, and it's like, well, I completely missed my chance to see them, like, you know, with their original group of guys, and yeah, that really blows. Best, That's yeah. why anytime I get a chance to see somebody live, like, if I haven't seen them before, I do my best to make it out, especially after we were at Carolina Rebellion, and then Chris from Soundgarden passed away, like, oh, the next man. week, and we had neglected to go see them because they were the headliner, and we were like, well, it's going to be you know, really crowded and like everybody's going to leave right after that set and we just kind of want to get out. So we got to hear Chris from like over the hill as we walked to our car, yeah. but we didn't get to see him and like that made us all really sad, like me and my buddies, just because yeah. we're, we were like, man, like we should have like, you know, gone and seen him because yeah. we, we didn't expect like it was going to, our chance was going to be gone the next week. Everybody's got their regrets, man. I mean, me, me, I like, I I had time after time after time to see Lincoln Park like like three four times like like a friend asked me to go one time and I couldn't afford it another time yeah. happened um, my another time happened my grandmother died so I couldn't go then the third time I was watching my grandfather so I couldn't go watch him then uh, and and then now it's impossible for me to see Lincoln Park in there you know in there original form because you know chester's gone yeah and same thing with pantera same thing with like like you pointed out sound garden heck audio slave i liked audio slave too i mean yeah i mean never get to see them again and that's just like all these like all the great ones you know all the you know moments in time i've heard some people say it moments in time like when miracles happen and like say when the eagles got back together like nobody thought that would ever happen like right. like 14 years later they get back together in 1994 after a bevy of bs you know and a whole lot of egos and all that and uh actually i talked to my mom about trying to go see the eagles like back in 2015 because they were coming to knoxville and we looked at ticket prices and ticket prices were like 200 dollars for like rafter seats i was like well can't go to that now so uh <laughs> Uh, and then a year later, uh, Glenn Fry passes away, and that and that was it. Now the Eagles. Now don't get me wrong, the Eagles have I mean, they're still going with Glenn Fry's son at the at the or with Glenn Fry's son at the lead, but still it's just like dang. 
you miss your opportunities to yeah. experience some things. It's just like it's not the original experience now. Yeah, and a lot of people had that same feeling about the Red Hot Chili Peppers as well. Like whenever, uh, whenever uh, John Frusciante left, yeah. the, the guitar, you know, arguably their best guitarist. Well, I will say he is their best guitarist because when you do when your most popular albums, whenever he's like at the at the precipice of the songwriting and everything. Don't get me wrong. Josh Klinghoffer is a great guitarist, and I think he's a good a good amount of energy that they need in the band. It's just with Frusciante, they had such a creative force with him. I mean, you that's look at, like um, go ahead. Born of Osiris was one of my favorite bands, and they had Jason Richardson for one album. That album is a masterpiece. It's <laughs> one of the best albums I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, and he left, and then their albums have been. You know, just as good as they were before that album, but, but they him. will not have a masterpiece like that without him. I don't believe. There you go. Like he was just—he's he, one of the most amazing like guitarists in that genre currently today. Yeah. It's like because he's in the deathcore, like a uh, technical deathcore genre. Yeah. And just he's a sick guitarist, and I was just so disappointed because I was like, man, like Jason was like what you know just made Born of Osiris from being like a really good deathcore band to like a phenomenal like you know like, like, a, like gym a, like of like a deathcore band at a higher level yeah than no one could have like an ascendant level yeah, <laughs> of like definitely awesome I, but I yeah it that. sucks like it sucks anytime somebody leaves a band that you like and it sucks for sure anytime that somebody passes away yeah it's like because i mean at least there's a possibility a small possibility that a yeah. band can come back if someone's still alive, you know, because uh, As All A Dying just came back despite, you know, the controversy that went down with Tim and everything, and mm. they've got some really heartfelt videos out about how long it took the band members to forgive him and everything, but they've decided, you know, he's a changed guy, and they're going forward with it, so it's that's, like we got a second it. chance to see As All A Dying again and see him make more music, but you don't always get that. Yeah, it, it's just like... There's been one band that has been on the verge of breakup since, I believe, since uh, they released their uh, the White Pony album, Deftones. Yeah. Um, the Deftones, I mean, holy crap. Because Chino and uh, Steven, as Chino puts it, whenever they're in songwriting mode, he can be, as he puts it, a moody motherfucker. <laughs> and he can actually, like, like, butt heads despite there being no beef whatsoever. And Steven has actually said at times he's thought about leaving because he doesn't like that in his life, but then he hears the outcome of the album and what and what has inspired the album to really come forward and everything, and he and he decides to stay on. I hear Chino's actually a lot easier to deal with now, but uh, but Steven but Steven's talked about that in the past, and Chino himself has admitted it too that you know during some of the like since two thousand like two thousand two two thousand uh, two thousand four. Uh, he's, he's, he was such a moody jerk. Yeah. And it was because he felt he had to be in order to put out the type of lyrics and the type of albums that would live up to the Deftones name because everyone said White Pony's their best album. You know, White Pony, White Pony, White Pony. And I gotta agree, White Pony to me is my favorite album of theirs, but that doesn't mean all their other albums suck. It's just like you yeah, said. Yeah, by you know, no means. Yeah. It's because sometimes people are in a creative, like, Whenever you you hit your creative peak, whenever you're like writing songs that you feel are like you that reach people, like I uh, a odd choice of this, the Beatles. You know, the Beatles had a creative peak for ten years where they had more number one singles than any other group in history, and it's because their music reached people. Mm-hmm. And during that time, you know, you saw people who at first got along, but then egos started to form, and then. Everybody started to like go their own direction, and then eventually you had split, and then all hope of that was dashed when John Lennon got killed. Which you know, all personal things aside, I will say John Lennon, one of the best, one of the best songwriters ever. I mean, him and McCartney, I mean, have written some of the best songs ever. But um, you know, time, you know, time goes on, man. I mean, you I mean over time, it's just you get to a point in life where you stop receiving things and you just start losing things and more and more I'm, I'm like seeing my heroes like my favorite like my favorite individuals to watch go down and it's just like what can I do what what can be done you just have to enjoy them while they're here as best you can exactly and then and, you know tribute them after they're gone yeah it, so. it's just like my MySpace don't forget them 
keep them alive, keep them immortal. It's just like my MySpace page. I was so torn up about my uh, my about the death of a dime that my MySpace page from its from its birth to its end, you know what my background was? Dime. The memorial picture of Dimebag Daryl at his funeral. Uh, the one where Eddie Van Halen takes the Frankenstein two from the cover of uh, uh, Van Halen two and actually put it in the coffin with Dimebag Daryl. Yeah. When Eddie Van Halen, well, because Dime for a long time wanted that guitar. He loved the look of that guitar. He loved how it sounded and all that. And he wanted Eddie to make him one. And unfortunately, it was not able to happen. And Eddie put it, put the original one in the casket with him. That's how much respect Eddie had for him. And if you would have told, and actually Terry Glaze, the original lead singer of Pantera, Pantera said, if you told Dime that, bro, at your funeral, Eddie Van Halen is going to put that guitar in your casket with you, you know what Dime would have said? Kill me now. You probably had a heart <laughs> Kill me now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right well we've been going on this for 20 minutes good god we need to we need to call we need to cut it here thank you all so much for tuning in uh this was pantera primal concrete sledge live from russia 1991 if you all want to uh see more stuff by pantera uh you know uh, feel uh if you're interested in seeing more from pantera link in the description down below will take you to uh take you to their original uh, take you to their original YouTube page where all of their music is. You can go and support them there. Uh, if you want to uh, look up more about Vinnie Paul and uh, Dime, feel free to do that as well. And, um, you know, I I just feel like I should say thank you, Vinny, for all the work you did and everything you put out. And rest easy, my friend. Rest yeah, easy. Rest in peace, Vinny. Yeah. I hope there's a next life you and Lemmy and Dio and all the other great musicians are rocking out in right now. Their lead singer. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Oh, man. Just the super groups that are in heaven could be yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again, everybody. And until next time, we'll see you then. Peace out.